Why, hello, WCA. It is the great Mike Amore. Welcome to the winter 2019 session. This is a 4 p.m. video, and we're going to take a look at the way, as students, we look at a chess position and find the compensation. Because if we can look at any chess position where somebody is down material or they have broken pawn structure, and we can find the compensation, then in our own games, the idea is we can play material down or with broken structure, etc. The best way to get good at these ideas or these positions is to play them. And we did that in class, uh, although we didn't play from a gambit position. I want to show you one today from the Scandinavian. Uh, so there's a grandmaster playing the black pieces. His name is Rousis or Rousies. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. But the guy's like almost 2,600. And he's playing an IM strength player, you know, at 2,400. So, you know, these cats can really play, correct? So from the Scandinavian, which has become popular, by the way, because not everybody studies it as much as the Sicilian or the French or some of the other king pawn openings. So the players with black are hoping to get a little bit of a head start and maybe know more about the positions than their opponent, but not necessarily at this level, correct? So let's look at the knight f6 move, where black is telling white, you know, I'm not going to collect the pawn right away. I may not want my queen in the center, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to hang on to your pawn, which does create here after pawn c4 um, some of the most exciting games in the Scandinavian defense. Uh, black can play the move e6, but the move I want to look at today is uh, what we are, we're recommending in class is the move c6, which can turn into a Karo Khan, except if white accepts, and white does accept here. So they snap off the pawn clearly you are taking with the knight. If you take the pawn with a pawn and you look at a computer evaluation. Now, you know, I use Chessbase and the account that I have with Chessbase allows me to see a lot of computers that are up in the cloud. And the beauty of that is the computers do all the work. So other players go in there and then they post their analysis. So what I can do is I can look at somebody's computer evaluation where that computer may have been running for 20 minutes. That's pretty cool. So instead of me having to sit and wait for my computer to find things, I can look at other people's research. And if I put this on, I'm looking right now at a computer, three of them actually, that just say black is flat out down upon. Down upon. Now, if you look at the game continuation, let's go back to this position. So white just accepted your pawn offer. You clearly take with the knight. Now, if I look at the same computers that are evaluating this position, dead equal. So there's a full pawn difference. Now, for me, it's one of the most fascinating things about chess is trying to understand as a human what computers think or how they think. How does the computer evaluate this as being completely equal and this position, black being down a pawn? It's the same material. Black is down a pawn in either case. Okay, so let's stop and think. I would recommend for you to stop your video right now at the 350 mark or whatever we're, wherever we're at. Pause it and spend a little time and try to evaluate the position. Okay, I'm hoping that you can see with these highlights that you not only have two minor pieces in the game, white doesn't have a single piece developed yet, but I, I really want you to pay attention to the square on d4. It's terribly weak, and it's very hard for white to get enough control of this square to ever put a pawn on it. And if that's the case, try to think about what your advantages are. If this pawn here that I'm toggling on d2 can't get to d4, that means it's going to have to spend some of its life on d3. Well, picture that in your mind. What is the d3 pawn doing to the bishop? It's clearly not where it wants to be. So as a human player, you should feel pretty comfortable in this position. Now, what to do from here? Here's a little hint. If you're looking at a pawn structure like this one here and you see that you have a major grip on a square, 
but you don't see any tactics yet, my advice to you would be to continue developing with an eye on that square. Let me show you what I mean. So in the game, white played knight f3 because now with the knight on f3, white is threatening to play the move d4. Can white play d4 back here? The answer is yes, but they're giving the pawn back. When they give the pawn back, I would just take it with the queen, uh, not fearing a queen trade at all, because once I take back with my knight on d4, already black has a major threat, which you should see. Well, not so easy for white to deal with this knight hopping into c2. You can put a knight on the side of the board. Okay. But then, you know, once this bishop gets loose, there, there'll be a threat. You can play a move like bishop to d3, and then black just plays e5. And although the computer, the computer kind of likes black a little bit here, material is equal, black is certainly not winning. But, you know, you kind of have an outposted knight on move seven is black. This is not the way to play chess for white. So let's go back. Black accepts and takes. There it is. You're down a pawn. So white plays the very natural knight of three. Simple idea. They're trying to play d4. And the grandmaster with the black pieces does not allow that. So what do they play? Very good, Fred. Congratulations to Fred. You know, my man just, he's going to be 71 in a couple of weeks, he said. And uh, he's out there playing tournaments again. Love it. Love it. I'm going to write a little something about him in the blog. Um, beautiful. You put a pawn on e5. We develop the dark squared bishop and we take that really nice grip of the d4 square. e5 is threatening e4, kicking this knight away. And in the game, white played the move I mentioned, d3, to kind of prevent that. And it turns out, you know, a lot of people were recommending here to continue with bishop to c5. But here's where I want you to stop the video. Again, after d3, check this out. Can we play e4 anyway? Think about how disruptive that is if the pawn comes to e4. It, it turns out the computer is kind of like you playing directly here. Bishop c5 is a terrific move. There's nothing wrong with bishop c5. But e4 right away gives black a headache, uh, white a headache. What to do with that knight? In the game, white decides to take the pawn off the board, allowing the queen trade. If you don't want to take the pawn and try to get cute and pin it with the queen, already you can see the problems beginning. How to continue? Well, let's kind of use our imagination without me showing you any moves. The queen stops us from taking because of the pin. Okay, so maybe pause the video again and try to imagine how you might continue the game. Okay, white's in trouble. Give him a check. You know, we're not randomly checking. We're giving that check because it now allows our king to castle, which would bring this rook on h8 to the open e-file or soon to be open e-file. That's awesome for us. If they block the check, say with a knight, you can continue with a move like queen a5. Now, really pay attention to the position. Any WCA student, all of you, forget how much material is, is given to either side. You have to love to play chess this way. Look at the arrows I'm about to turn on. Ouch. Oh, my goodness. You know what those arrows are showing? the future of every single major piece in the game, including the king. In one move, your king is going to be castled. Can you imagine where this rook is going to end up in this middle game? The light squared bishop and the rook on a8. Look at the knight. If you have a bishop here pinned to the, pinning this knight to the queen, this knight hopping into d4, you have a battery pointing at the c3 square. In a matter of two or three moves, both rooks will be hitting the center. Every minor piece is like pinning or winning something. Awesome. So after e4, takes. We trade the queens. We trade the queens. You know, currently we're two pawns down, but we're going to snap this one off right away. We're still down a pawn. Do we have compensation? We do. Not only do we have compensation, now the computers are starting to squeak a little bit. They're squeaking. They're kind of like saying, ah, you know, maybe black actually has a little something here. 
It's not just equal anymore. Well, why is that? We have a threat, don't we? We have a threat. We're threatening to take on F2. So, you know, if you move your king to E1 to stop that threat, you're walking your king to the E file. If you go to E2, same thing, except even worse, you're, you're locking in your light squared bishop. So what, is, what does white do? Very natural bishop to E3. Very natural. I like to say natural. Very natural move. Well, how to continue? The rook on A8 is like, come on, man. You know, like, ah, ah, come on, come on, come on. Look at that. Ah, 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 ah. check, check, check. You know, there's no pawn cover for the king. So what do we do? Watch it whistle. Yeah, I love that. We need to move our light square bishop. Bishop F5. The bishop on F5 is pointing in the direction that this king is most likely going to get into. He's, he's going to end up over here because if he comes to E1 or E2, this rook here is probably going to get involved on the E line. So naturally, white sidesteps, black castles, very natural moves, a developing move. And now I like black's move a lot. Me personally... I have trouble playing these positions sometimes because I feel like I have a little something for my pawn, but I'm not always 100% sure how to continue. What the Grandmaster with Black does here is very, very instructive. We are down a pawn, and we've been taught not to trade when we're down, to keep the initiative, to keep pressing. But what he does is he plays bishop to c5. And the reason is he's challenging White's I don't know. Would you guys agree this is this is White's best place piece here? I think it's pretty cool. This is a pretty strong piece. And if you back up for one move, this move that we just play connects our rooks. When you connect the rooks and there are open files, look at this structure. There are two central open files. If you have the opportunity to put two rooks on central files that are open, that's 10 points of power involved in the game. So by moving bishop to c5, you're, you're telling white, look, my rooks are connected, they're coming into the middle, and I'm threatening to give you another weakness because if I take this pawn, then I'm going to isolate your e-pawn, and I'll be all over that thing. Plus, my knight has more access to your side of the board. So white takes we take back with the knight. What white overlooked here, and the computers, by the way, are really squeak, really squeaking now. I don't know why I'm using the word squeak. No idea. Don't ask. I don't have time to figure it out. But I'm saying it because the computers are really starting to like black now. The humans are starting to like black. What about you? You see how this player has turned this position around? These two knights have access to tons of squares near this king. Look at the knight on b1, the rook on a1. So white naturally brings it out, and black presses forward. And I use the word forward deliberately. I, I mean the word forward. These are forward knights, especially this one. A forward knight, my definition of one, is a, 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 a knight that is forward in the position. It is in your house. Be careful. Be very careful. If you were to centralize this knight and challenge the one on b4, remember those rooks I was talking about? Yeah, if you go for a trade here, they're going to go for a trade here. Again, look at the position. Now the computers are not squeaking anymore. They're shouting. Let's go back. Knight b4, major threat on the board. White missed it and played knight h4. Their idea is very good. We would love to trade this knight for this bishop, get this thing off the board. I mean, look at this bishop. It's an absolute, absolute monster. Look at it. White's idea, very good. Okay, pause your video. What did black play? You got it? Crunch, ouch, knight takes pawn check king can't move they don't really care what you do with the knight however you take it you see what's coming next for example i don't know let's say you take with the rook 
What do we do? Have a nice day, WCA. You guys are the best.